Hello everyone, um, welcome to our home in France. Um, for those that don't know, this is Sam, my lovely wife. Hello. Um, now Sam's got a shop, uh, an online shop, and an Etsy shop, haven't you? I have, yes. Yeah, she's got her own channel as well. She'll be overtaking me soon. I don't know about that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you might do. Now, I hope you've been enjoying our uh, vlogs up till now, uh, brocant hunting and uh, going to various antique fairs. Um, so yeah, if you're uh, interested in this sort of stuff, drop into our shops, have a look, see what you think, and uh, yeah, thanks for all your support. Also, while I'm here, um, Heidi's just purchased this via my Etsy shop. She's a, a viewer. Um, thank you very much, Heidi. Uh, we appreciate your support, you know, buying stuff from us out of our shop and that. Um, it helps us uh, carry carry on doing what we love, really, going out antique hunting and, and uh, sharing it with you. So, uh, yeah, this will be parceled up and sent out to you very quickly. So, thanks again. So, all boxed up, ready to go. This one will be shortly winging its way to the United States of America. So, that will get there. Um, Sometimes about two to three weeks, sometimes quicker, so not a, not a bad uh, delivery time on that. Um, now, when I go to the delivery point, I also pick up parcels that I've ordered online. Um, so I've got something interesting to pick up, so uh, maybe you'll join me and uh, we'll see what it is. meeting you here. Right, now I'm just off to drop one parcel off and pick one up. Might squeeze in a coffee and a cake as well. Let's go. Obligatory masks. Right, well, it's not that thimble that I ordered. <laughs> There you go, Sean. You said buy me a coffee. I've bought you a coffee. Cheers. Ooh. Nice coffee to get you going for the day. Right, let's go antiquing. Have we here? Wow, well, that's nice. That's ancient. 1800s, that. I shall have that. What have we here? Wow, well, that's really rare. A rebating plane in the form of a saw. That's brill. Got some hole saws. Ah, a spoke shave or draw knife. That's for making me oak pegs for me barn. Brill. I'll take that. Thank you very much.
Amazing. Fancy seeing you here. Hello, look what I just got, isn't that lovely? Beautiful. It's going to be going on my Etsy shop, Anglo French Vintage. Ooh. How lovely. See you in a bit. Bye. So I'm back home from the Vid Grenier. Um, I'm just going to go and show you what I've got. So let's have a look. Okay. Got some nice ferro and ball paint. French grey. That will come in handy for my uh, creation of my boot room. I'll talk about that a bit later. That's quite an unusual carrier that. Old down handle, very industrial. Might get two big magnums of champagne in there. <laughs> I doubt it, but anyway, probably be more like two pots of paint in there. Yeah, that's quite unusual. Some repairs here and there, but that's what you'd expect from an industrial item of over a hundred years old. And these lovely enamel house plaque numbers I'll probably upcycle them in a, a project um, because they're made of enamel it's so ideal to put down hot pans and and uh, kettle or something like that on there so I might set that in a piece of oak I'm not quite sure yet uh, it's me lucky number seven so yeah, I like the colours, beautiful blue colour, matches uh, the colourway that I use in my kitchen, very similar to my uh, range cooker. So they'll get incorporated into something, so that's okay. Right, I just about managed to squeeze in the doors into my car. Now these are beautiful, I'll just get those out and show you what I intend to do with them. These are stunning. Now, they are originally from an armoire, which is uh, a French wardrobe where they keep linen and other, uh, other things like that. So anyway, someone sort of repurposed them with these brackets, coat hooks, so they can come off. Now these two doors are going to be destined for my soon to be created boot room. Now, they're all hand carved, absolutely gorgeous, lovely carvings, and probably mid-1800, so they will be the doors on the front of a cupboard that I'm going to create, and I can put all my clothes, like 
jackets, jumpers, all winter stuff that you take off when you come in into your boot room. Hats, scarves, just tidy everything neatly away. So, yeah. Now, I bet you're all saying, how much were they, Sean? Well, I paid a princely sum of 20 euros for these two doors. Yes, that's right, 20 euros. So there's still bargains out there to be had. A lovely hand carving. Absolutely stunning. So I shall give those a light clean down and some beeswax. And you can watch me install these in my boot room. I shall make a framework, get some different hinges, keep the original ones on them. That's these ones. But put hinges behind, just purely for operational purposes. You, got, you won't be able to see them from the front. So it looked like that they're operating on these hinges, but there'll be a basic set behind. Stunning. Very happy. Now this is the other side of the door. So you can just see the construction. Some sort of fruit wood, probably cherry. I'll have a closer inspection later. Yeah. So it's always a little bit random what you find at these boot sales. That's a very unusual item. A big ladle. Now it's very unusual because it's it's formed from a square of copper. Normally they're flat, but this is all uh, like they call it chip carving. All done by hand, probably mid 18, early, maybe early 1800s. This one, plenty of wear. It's probably just for decoration purposes now, really, although it could be used. So that will get cleaned up. Now, these are for drilling holes into timber, a little bit of hydraulic action. So, long before the days of battery drills, let's say our real artisans used to work the timber. And uh, there's a slightly bigger one for making some bigger holes. Now this is a spoke shave, or a draw knife, there's several different names. I'll show you the use for this a bit later. Um, I've got one of these, but I couldn't find it, so I was really, really uh, pleased to come across this this morning. Now this here, you don't often see them in this form. It's the shape of a saw and it's for going up against furniture very sort of closely. Being able to run it backwards and forwards and sort of cut a rebate. But it's very unusual. It's all stamped up. Someone didn't want to lose this one. So that's a really good find. Uh, okay, yeah, spare handle. Those. And the rest are like the block planes, different profiles, very decorative, uh, polished up in a workshop quite know what else is in here let's have a look oh no. one blade goes with that one so yeah they look nice polished up but I kind of bought a job lot I was really after this one this one and the hand augers so yeah quite a good haul this morning slightly different 
not too much copper. But yeah, she'll put these to good use. So, let's see what's in the box. You probably have a rough idea. Wow, that's an unusual one. De Hillerin, sign of quality, LTH initials. And this one needs a slight repair, so this is going to go to the, uh, the coppersmiths. There's a break there. Now what they'll do, they'll probably either take this off and replace it, or they'll bend it back into shape and re-solder it in brass. Um, they'll clean the interior all by hand, polish the base, hammer out all of these marks. But uh, yeah, I'll get the artisans onto that. I'd say it's always important that you know you you help other sort of historic trades like the coppersmiths. Um, you know they they need all the help they can get. Really, it's a bit of a dying dying art, and um, they can bring this one back into service, which is always good. That's that one. Like Christmas. <laughs> Crikey. I've seen quite a lot of these sort of things, but never of such good quality as this. Wow, look at that. Huge bronze handles, all planished, which means it's all the little hammer marks. Dovetail jointing, sign of quality. Now there's a maker's mark somewhere. Oh yes. That's the money shot. Gallard. Well, there's some weight in that. Again, it needs a lot of work, a lot of polishing. But well worth, well worth the effort with this one. Now, this is a professional piece of equipment. Now, this would have been in a chateau, like a or a proper, you know, full-on restaurant. Back in the day and probably will be or into a private home or collection once it's all done so again a huge big stock pot uh, for jam or something like that so what i'll probably do with these two pieces is i'll film the process of me taking it to the coppersmiths putting it into their workshops hopefully i can get some film of them actually doing it like some proper footage lifetime footage so that'd be great so you can see sort of how much work actually goes into these pieces you know, at first glance, you know, you think, well, they're really expensive. And yeah, they're not, they're not cheap items, you know, they're, they're made to last and you pay for quality, which these are. Um, and when you sort of think of the journey that these go on from start to finish, you know, I have to buy them. I then get somebody else to work on majority of them, polishing. Um, a lot of man hours goes into these. Now, there's several good things with these. Um, copper is the best conductor there is, without a doubt, with cooking. That's why it's favoured by so many chefs. So in actual fact, after your initial purchase, um, when you use these, like if you had, um, say, five or six sort of pans on the go constantly with gas or other uh, fuels like that, now these save quite a quite a considerable amount over their, over their time. Um, you're probably looking, I'm not sure of the figures, probably sort of 30% better fuel savings on using these, which means, you know, um, you get 30% more, if you like, for the same amount of fuel you'd use if you use stainless steel or something like that. So, yeah, they're really efficient, good conductors. So you, you actually use less heat to get the same temperature. They're controllable, which means you take it off the heat and they cool down very quickly, back on, back up again. So that's why many top chefs prefer copper. They're recycled, you know, they've, they've been made sort of a hundred years ago. So that's another good side. Now there's plenty of health benefits from using copper and tin uh, as opposed to modern day uh, Teflon and things like that. So look into that, you know, if it's a health concern you're thinking about. 
and once you've bought them you know after sort of basic cleaning and maintenance um, if they are untinned then you haven't got to get them tinned again so that is it you know just basic cleaning you now these will last generations it's nice to be able to hand things down you know mm -hmm. to if you've got a budding chef in the family you know so yeah at first glance yeah they are expensive you know I'm not gonna lie they're not cheap items but they never was so uh, yeah they tick all the boxes for me anyway <laughs> but yeah very nice items and uh, you can follow me on the journey with these I've got a few other items that I'm gonna uh, refurbish as well um, smaller pots but yeah nice to be part of the journey sometimes it's not all about um, profit for me even though this is my my business my main job um, selling copper items online um, it's good just to bring them back into service so uh, you know it swings and roundabouts. sometimes you know it's well worth your while sometimes sometimes you don't break even but uh, you know that's business and it's also a privilege really to keep the the heritage artisan side of the uh, coppersmith and tinning uh, workshop so yeah they need all the help we can get which I'm glad to be a part of so yeah a worthy cause I believe anyway right I hope you enjoyed that video don't forget subscribe and hit the bell button if you like what you see uh, we've got some more in the pipeline so yeah thanks for your support see you soon